his life, isn't it? Hello. My name is Dr. Andrew Michaels. And I'm here to help you. I'm not going to perform the normal ritual of exorcism. No. But with this water, give me your hand. That's right. Give me your hand. your hand. Do you feel it? Do you feel the release? He has no power over you anymore. You are a child of God, the Son of Man, much in the same way I am, all of us equal, <laughs> all of us benefiting. Place your hands in the water again. person weakening demon yes do you feel your grip fraying as they reassert themselves their connection with the heavenly host release this person demon release them they don't deserve this you have to face me. I am within my rights as the law. I am the law here. I carry the badge of the Department of Special Services, the Department of Navy, connected to the CIA, the sovereign nation of the United States of America under God. We have a covenant under the law. You and I must obey. I am the law. And you must obey this covenant. That's right. Come out so I can see you. 
see you for what you really are. Come out now. show you my father's Bible. And my father taught me a few things. Scopophobia, aren't you? You're the demon Scopophobia. You lied to me. I have a covenant with the dark prince of evil, the fallen angel, Lucifer, and all his Luciferian host. And you dissipated that covenant to come after the god particle, thinking I would be silly enough to bring it and have it on my possession. You possessed this young person. You possessed their soul. Now they're free and they can go away. And now that you're facing me, I want you to hear this. I want you to hear what he said, that the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is in man, not one man, a group of men, in all men. And you will have no more authority over this person again. You will not possess anyone again. You will obey the covenants between heaven and earth. You will obey the law, Scopophobia. And you will allow me my pound of flesh. You thought so, huh? Of course I have it. Of course I have it. The God Particle. I had it on me the whole time. You could sense it, how close you were to it. So close, yet so far away. But while you're bound to that chair, you will not have possession of this. It will stay with its rightful guardian, and you will obey the law. Do I have your word that you will leave this person alone forever? Ask you another question. 
<laughs> Who sent you here? Why did they send you here? What is your purpose here? I command you to tell me. I'll free you from your bonds when I need to. Until then, you will tell me that which I want to hear. Who sent you? Who broke the covenant between God and man? Okay. Well, he's not coming back. Your own kind put him away in a place he could never return. So I don't know what you were told, but he's never coming back. Now listen to me, and I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story about when you and I first met, while I anoint you with this oil. I was in high school. I was a very young man. And I had a troubled ch childhood. I didn't have a lot of friends. But those that I did have were very close to me. This is the story of the two Mikes. There were two young men in my school, and they were both named Mike. One was quite sizably larger than the other, a full-grown man, and he was at least 17 or maybe 18 years old at the time, but he had been held back and was only a sophomore. He was confronting the younger Mike. The younger Mike was brash and smaller and he offended the larger older young man as they were leaving the lunchroom Mike took the opportunity to lure the smaller child out into the hallway so that he could what we called in those days sucker punch him jump him hurt him without his knowledge and that's exactly what he did he hit him so hard I don't know what hurt him more the strike of the blow to his face or when his head hit the concrete ground but I do know the bell rang and when the bell rang all of us left the cafeteria en masse this was the part of the story that struck me that nobody ever told until today. The younger Mike was, of course, near unconscious, laying on his face with his head over his hand. Head over his hand. You could see saliva and blood all over the floor above him. He must have raised his head and spit up, and then put his head back down. He could barely move. As he lie there in anguish, in obvious distress, no one stopped to help him. The crowd walked around him, the older Mike already up, leaving the scene of the accident and crime. They walked around him like he wasn't there. And that's when I saw you, Scopophobia. That's right. 
I saw you in the shadows. Do you see it even now as I show you? Do you see it? Scopophobia. You were going against the light sources. All the shadows were going west, but your shadow was going east. You remember that, don't you? You know your kind are all the same. And the sun and the path of the heavens has no bounds on you and your supernatural ways. And as I said, the sun and shadows were cast this way. Yet your shadows were going the opposite direction. And I saw your kin. I saw you, Scopophobia. I saw all of you leap inside that boy's body, one after another. You leaped into him. You changed him. You entered into his world of hatred. How he hated you. Oh, how he hated humanity. Everybody in his life at that moment in time, he hated them. And you saw an opportunity to jump inside his body and take over his soul and wrap yourselves around him. Wrap yourselves around. Much so as you could. You did, didn't you? And I was there and I saw you, Scopophobia. I saw what you did, and it sent the scariest, cringing feeling up my spine to know that I saw what you did to that young man. His life at that point had no meaning. You owned him. You owned that person's soul. And you made good use of it, didn't you? You made him struggle for every inch of his humanity for years and years to come. Now it's the story of the two Mikes. The other Mike, of course, was immediately removed from the school. What little chance he had at a future, removed forever. He died very young, and he died alone, and he died sickly. The person I knew in that hallway that day was a strong, young, vibrant man. But after what had happened to him, after that experience, and we all know who caused Mike to strike the other one, you were already inside him. You were already doing your work on him. Penniless, alone, he died. He took him. You took him to your home. And he's gone. there's still a chance with the other Mike. The doctors put his face back together. They sealed the bone. They healed his muscle. And he was able to resume his career. I remember the last time I saw that Mike. He was behind a dumpster, crouched down. He looked like Aqualung, trying to avoid the eyes and the stares of everyone around him. You put him there, a human being amongst waste, the filth and trash the discarded items of humanity. You put him there. 
And I saw him planning, thinking, reviewing his options. I saw you working inside him. And I saw the shadows cast away into the sun, the opposite direction that they should have ran. And I knew you were in there. I knew it. And I knew, just like today, when you brought Mike through the door of my laboratory, And he didn't even recognize me all these years later. He doesn't know me anymore. We're not friends. I guess, in a way, we never were. To think passing him on the street that he wouldn't even say hello because he had no idea who I was. And that's all because of you. How you own him. How you grip down deep inside him. I couldn't help the other Mike. But I'm going to try and help this one. Because my father taught me. My father sent me to church, and I learned, and I remember the day his father died. We were in the home, and his sister said, you could have anything you want to remember him by, anything. And there was monies, and valuables, treasures of a lifetime all around him. And my father asked for his rosary. My father said, I know where it is. And he told his sister, and she went right up to the bedroom upstairs. And she brought it right back down to him. It was right where he said it would be. It was right where his mother told him it was kept all those years. And he took his father's rosary. And that's all he took. I remember the next day the vultures descended on the house. We were long gone by then. I remember my father holding those rosaries in his hand. The stopwatch chain. A poor example of what treasure my father held in his that day. Though my father took us away from the Catholic Church, he never forgot the teachings. He never forgot the lessons his father taught him. The connection between a father and a son, between two friends, between two human beings, you will have no power over this man anymore. You will not enter that man again. I know what you want, and I'm going to give it to you. Because I already know 
You can't possess it. I'm going to hand this to you. You go ahead and take it. You do with it what you will. But I already know the results. This is Dr. Andrew Michaels, over. The demon's been dispatched. Come get me, I wanna go home, over. That's right, copy, the demon's been dispatched. And I want to go home, over. I copy that, over. forget and leave this world far behind.
that's smooth. That's Dr. Andrew Michaels, I know. That's the boy I know. Dr. Andrew Michaels. Ha 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 